Hello there everyone, it's Lilith again, and today we're going to review some of my favorite games for practicing mindfulness and getting cozy on the Nintendo Switch. This video will be the first in a series, since there are so many games I could cover and more releasing every day. Seasoned, cozy Switch gamers will find many of these familiar, but my hope is that this video and this channel might give you some inspiration to change how you play or approach these titles. If you are new here or returning after a while, welcome or welcome back. I have come back to YouTube after a year-long hiatus with a new mission, building a mindful gaming movement. I'll be posting new videos on gaming for mindfulness every week, so if that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to subscribe and check out some of my most recent videos to catch up. Now, with that said, grab that tea and a cozy blanket and let's get into the games. This is the game that started this channel, so it's fitting I mention it first. I have a video on playing Animal Crossing New Horizons mindfully that I've linked here and in the description below, so be sure to check it out if you'd like to learn more strategies for playing Animal Crossing mindfully and to relax. The most notably mindful feature of this game is how it utilizes time. The game encourages you to slow down, take things day by day and moment to moment, building an island literally square by square, from completely unexplored and wild to a fully realized town or city or whatever you decide to make. Whether you flex your creativity and build your island up completely with neighborhoods and roads and paths and forests and more, or keep it quite simple and natural, the game has an inherent beauty that invites you to spend time in it, from the wind blowing through the trees, to the flowers and bushes you can plant, to the sunrises and thunderstorms and snowfall, and of course, the rivers and waterfalls and sprawling ocean. You can explore everything, climbing and shaking trees and digging holes and even swimming. Animal Crossing is an alternate, simple world to spend time in where you can take what you learn about being present and reveling in the littlest things back outside with you. It is a beautiful game, one that if you haven't already explored is well worth your time. And again, I've talked at length about this game on this channel, so be sure to check out my Animal Crossing playlists if you're interested in learning more. Cozy Grove has some similar features to Animal Crossing. It takes place in real time on an island. You slowly, day by day, get to know and build relationships with your non-human neighbors. There's fishing and bug collecting and even crafting and decorating. But for all its similarities, Cozy Grove feels fundamentally different, with a stunning watercolor art style and a deeper, more moving story and character development. Many of the tasks that progress the game and your relationships with the Cozy Island's residents involve looking for items, sometimes hidden in plain sight, sometimes buried, sometimes just out of sight behind a rock or a bush. This emphasis on seeking things within the game's environment lends itself nicely to mindfulness practice. It encourages you to really take in the scenery and immerse yourself in the small details of the world around you. Only through this actual practice in mindfulness and being present can you progress in the game. Even gamers not so interested in mindfulness or unfamiliar with the practice are driven to take part in it each time they play. The characters are mindfully built with quaint, beautiful details to their design just waiting to be noticed. The environment is littered with small objects to find and marvel at, with even lesser known plants and trees like the pawpaw tree or the bee balm flower. Love has been poured into Cozy Grove at every level and minor detail, so it is almost an honor to inhabit the grove, taking in its details, finding yourself among its characters. Mindful gamers who want to get lost here certainly can, and the world they get to inhabit is a pleasure to behold. 
The newest Pokemon release, Legends Arceus, feels like a step in a new direction for the series and almost all of the changes lend themselves to mindful gameplay. First and most striking, the open world environments with big, wondrous skies and rivers and fields and mountains to explore are an inviting touch and even better, you can interact with them, mounting various Pokemon to run through the grasslands or swim through the oceans or even soar through the sky. You can have Pokemon aid you in shaking trees, breaking rocks, sifting through piles of leaves, and more, and you should do this because they've added a new crafting component to the game, which rewards you for exploring the world and collecting everything you can find to craft Pokeballs, potions, and more. In addition to the stunning environments, they've also made catching Pokemon a bit more dynamic with Pokemon who will flee if you don't sneak up on them, making it easier to catch Pokemon if you sneak up or attack from behind, and more. This invites players to consider how they are moving about in the world, encouraging slow exploration to avoid scaring away a rare Pokemon. In short, it invites players to explore mindfully, with intention, slowly and carefully. There is so much more I could say, and this game warrants its own video, which is coming soon, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. No collection of mindful games on the Switch could be complete without Breath of the Wild. Legends Arceus has been compared to Breath of the Wild since its earliest trailers, and it's because Breath of the Wild offers some of the most immersive and beautiful open worlds to explore on Nintendo Switch. From your first moments in Breath of the Wild, you stare out at a vast world filled with forests and mountains, and you can explore all of it. This is no false background that offers the illusion of vastness. This is the world you get to run through, ride through, climb through, swim through. This detail alone makes Breath of the Wild perfect for mindful gaming. It is a world that begs to be explored. All of this with one of the most careful and beautiful and engaging soundtracks available on the Switch. This game gives you a single objective, defeat Ganon, and it is up to you what your journey looks like on your way there. My suggestion, get lost, wander everywhere, make mistakes and fail and learn from them slowly. Talk to everyone and gather everything and befriend horses and take on side quests and explore for the sake of exploring. I've heard from many mindful and cozy gamers that they've found Breath of the Wild intimidating because of the challenge of fighting or puzzles, and if this is you, I urge you to give the game a go or pick it up and try it again. Mindful gaming does not mean games without challenge or battles. In fact, there's so much you can learn about noticing and being present by slowly improving in a battle against a lionel or a boss. Sometimes it is the challenges of a game that make the reward of a pause or a beautiful new area even more sweet. Like Breath of the Wild, Nino Kuni offers a vast and detailed world to explore. And this world is heavily inspired by the beautiful and recognizable art style of Studio Ghibli, which actually contributed to the game's animation and music. The writing and storytelling of Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is moving, thoughtful, and incredibly engaging. You feel as though you are navigating a Ghibli movie, wandering through a magical world, and making choices that mark your progress. In fact, one of the most frequent criticisms of the widely complimented game is its emphasis on a slower kind of storytelling. This is no fast-paced game, it is a slower burn, inviting you to enjoy each cutscene and the remarkable world building. This is no problem for mindful gamers. We are here to get lost. And the regions of this game were made to get lost in. Deep, winding forests, magical cities, long plains, and rolling hills. It is a joy to make your way 
through this game. And like Breath of the Wild, wandering and fully exploring this game is worthwhile and adds to its beauty. The game's battle system is unique, but would feel familiar to fans of JRPGs, slower than real time, but also not quite a fully paused turn-based system. It is itself something to get lost in and learn slowly over time. One of my favorite features of the game is the familiars. Spending time hunting for all of the different familiars that can fight for you, leveling them, and getting to know what they can do helps provide a reason for exploring and keeps the battle system interesting. There is a sequel to Wrath of the White Witch that has not yet made its way to the Switch, but if you find yourself wanting more of the story, and you probably will, and you have access to a PC or a PlayStation, it is there for you to explore. I have been playing Witchwood on Twitch for our weekly Fox Game Friday streams. We play games that feature foxes, you should join us and find myself thinking about the game days later. Visually, this is a game perfect for mindful gameplay. It has an intricate art style with lots of small details to notice. It has a beautiful, soft soundtrack, and one of my favorite features, small details of sound, from the soft humming of a farmer, the chirping of birds, the squelch of feet in mud, the giggling of a baby cabbage, to the bouncing of a frog or the buzz of a skeeter. But Witchwood is a mindful game not just because of meaningful visuals and sounds. It also tells an engaging and rich story that is reminiscent of a fairy tale or fantasy book, inviting the player to get lost in the world and interested in the characters and the plot. Perhaps even more notable for mindfulness, though, is the game's focus on crafting and collecting. To progress in the game, you need to explore areas and collect a plethora of materials. From campfire ember, to snail shells, to grains, and bits of meat, to create various potions and items. You need to craft items for the story, but you also need to craft items to be able to collect and harvest certain resources, so the game becomes an exercise in exploring, noting details, and paying attention. Like I said, absolutely perfect for mindful gamers. To learn what items are harvestable and how to collect them, you need to remember to hover over them with your witch eye, an in-game reward for situating yourself in each environment and taking notice of it. The more you get used to really looking around in each new environment you enter, the more easily you'll progress in the game. The game becomes a fun and immersive tool for practicing being present. This emphasis on going back and forth, gently reminding the player to pause and notice and remember, rewarding you for wandering and collecting and using the witch's eye to read up on everything in your surroundings, makes Witchwood a fun and rewarding game for practicing mindfulness and focus. Hands down, Spiritfarer is one of the most beautiful and immersive games available on the Switch. You play as Stella, a fairy master for those who have died, navigating the achingly beautiful world on a rustic ferry boat that you build up with rooms and crafting spaces and more over time. Searching for those who need you and fulfilling quests for them before, as the game describes, learning how to say goodbye. There are so many elements of mindful and cozy gaming here, from the passing of time, to stunning environments to explore, to farming and fishing and cooking and crafting, even spending a few moments hugging your cat, Daffodil. But there is one feature that makes this game stand out from mindfulness practice above even any that I've mentioned previously. You learn through gameplay that the present moment is enough, that time moves steadily and cannot be slowed, that change is inherent and unavoidable, that there is a beauty to impermanence, and that clinging to the past 
or worrying for the future can make you miss out on what it feels like to pass the time you do have with loved ones. There is a beautiful, if challenging, theme of letting go here, and the game, like no other I've ever played, illustrates mindfulness not just through an immersive setting and engaging gameplay, but through its storytelling. Spirit Fair is a game to linger in, to read carefully and consider every line and moment, to observe silently and with awe and no judgment how things change within it as you play, but also how it changes you and what it makes you feel, not just of the pain of loss, but of the beauty of loss too, and what it means to grieve something fiercely, but to love fiercely too. And that's that, seven games for mindful gaming on the Nintendo Switch. I could go on and on, and I will in future videos. Do you have a recommendation for a game you'd like to see me chat about in this series or in general? Let me know in the comments below. If you've played any of these, which is your favorite? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It will go a long way in helping to build this channel. And of course, join us on Twitch if you'd like to hang out live. I'm there doing mindful gaming Wednesday through Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Until next time, mindful gamers, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and spread some joy around.